Welcome to Accessible Art History, the podcast, the best place for art history lovers or anyone that is curious. My name is Annalisa, and I'm here to share an incredible work with you. Just a quick reminder before we get started. All sources and images will be posted on the Accessible Art History blog. You can find the link in the episode description as well as on our Instagram at accessible.art.history. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get started. This week, we are going to continue in our study of ancient Rome. Our next piece is the Column of Trajan. Completed in 113 CE, this column served as a proclamation of Emperor Trajan's victory over the Dacians. It is located in the remains of the Forum of Trajan in Rome, Italy. Not only was this column the inspiration for many similar pieces throughout history, but it is one of the best records we have about the Roman Wars of Expansion. Standing at an impressive 98 feet, or 30 meters tall, the Column of Trajan rises from the once majestic Forum of Trajan. Note that it is actually about 118 feet, or 35 meters tall, when the base is included. In order to achieve this height, 20 marble drums were stacked one on top of the other. This had to be done carefully because there is a narrative frieze that wraps around the entire thing. If it was rolled out, it would measure 620 feet, or 190 meters long. National Geographic put it best when they described this column as Trajan's memoirs and a war diary. In total, there are 155 scenes and 2,662 figures carved onto the column of Trajan. The emperor appears 58 times. Each moment is meticulously carved. Although the majority of the scenes deal with the war itself, there were also moments showing the everyday life and mundane tasks that come along with military life. In some cases, we are actually able to see the same scene, but from a different perspective. This ensures that we are able to fully understand what Trajan wanted to portray. It's important to note that this, for all intents and purposes, was just a giant piece of propaganda. The Romans are shown in the best possible and most powerful light. It is quite easy, even if you aren't trained in iconography, to tell the Romans from the Dacians. This is something we're going to discuss later in the episode. Another interesting fact about this column. This is the one of the only instances we see depictions of ordinary women in Roman art. Thankfully, we are still able to glean plenty of detail and knowledge from the Column of Trajan. This is because, in the 16th century, plaster casts were taken of the entire piece and stored for further study. Today, certain details have been lost to the effects of pollution and acid rain. It is likely these casts were taken as a part of the continued interest in the column. In 1587, Pope Sixtus V placed a statue of St. Peter on top of it. Previously, there had been a bronze eagle, but it disappeared sometime during the medieval period. This was a way for the papacy to claim the glory of the ancient empire for their own. In order to understand the column, it's important to understand who Trajan was. He ruled over the Roman Empire from 98 to 117 CE and was the second of the five good emperors. It was during his reign that the empire reached its largest expanse. It covered about 2 million square miles and contained about 50 million people, That's an astonishing 21% of the population at the time. I've included a map in the show notes for reference. We're going to talk more about this later in this episode. Trajan was born with the name Marcus Ulpius Trajanus in 53 CE in what is now Spain. His family was from Rome, however, and they were serving in the local government. This allowed him to claim the all-important Roman citizenship. Trajan rose through the ranks of the military and eventually achieved the rank of legate. He was popular with his soldiers, which led him to be formally adopted as heir to the Emperor Nerva. This was a common practice in the empire, where talent was more important than bloodline. Nerva was not popular with the military, and he knew it was in his best interest to adopt someone that was. When he died in 98, Trajan's transition to power was relatively smooth. Although Trajan is best known for his military efforts, he also invested time, money, and effort into public works projects. He built a forum, which is where the column stands, and a market in the center of Rome. This market is considered to be the first shopping center in the world, though it also served as an administrative hub. Trajan also worked to develop social welfare programs. It was because of these things that he is considered to be a great emperor. Following tradition, Trajan adopted his cousin Hadrian as his heir. He was born into a noble Roman family and had experience in the realm of politics. This made him a logical choice as imperial successor. Trajan died in 117 CE following a stroke. He was cremated and his ashes were placed in the base of his famous column. Since then, Trajan has been remembered as a wise emperor and an excellent military leader. 
In fact, Dante included him in his Divine Comedy, sitting with the god Jupiter in pagan heaven. As mentioned before, the Column of Trajan commemorates the Emperor's victory over the Dacians. This was his most famous military event. It actually consisted of two separate campaigns, one from 101 to 102 CE and the second from 105 to 106 CE. Dacia was located in modern-day Romania. To the Romans, these were a barbarian people that were occupying very valuable territory. In order to maintain such a large empire, massive amounts of gold and other metals were needed. Unfortunately for Dacians, they were sitting on top of a deposit that was worth millions or even billions in modern-day currency. According to records, which must be taken with a large grain of salt, the Romans were able to take 363,763 pounds of gold and 729,730 pounds of silver from the Dacians at the end of the second conflict. During the first conflict between Rome and Dacia, Trajan and his armies struck at the heart of their territories. Along the way, the Roman soldiers pillaged, plundered, and set the countryside on fire. They brought utter devastation to Dacia. Trajan achieved victory at the Second Battle of Tepe in 102 CE. As a part of the conditions of surrender, Rome agreed to provide technical and military support. One of the Romans' greatest contributions to the area was Trajan's Bridge. It was constructed by Apollodorus of Damascus and spanned the Danube River. In fact, it was the largest arch bridge constructed for the next 1,000 years. Note that it only stood for about 165 years, but there are enough records to survive to corroborate it. However, Disabilis, the leader of the Dacians, was a sneaky fellow. He didn't want to be under Rome's foot, and he wanted freedom for his people. So he took the technical and military aid and flipped it against Trajan's armies. Disabilis gathered other local tribes, and at the beginning, it seemed like they had the upper hand. But Trajan quickly sent reinforcements, and the Romans were able to take the offensive. The final battle took place at Sermitgezua in 106 CE. The Dacians were able to force back the first attack, but there was a traitor in their midst. This traitor snuck over to the Roman side and told them where the water supply was held. The Romans took this opportunity to gain the upper hand and destroy the Dacians' access to food and water. After realize what happened, the Dacians surrendered. Their leader, Decebalus, committed suicide instead of being taken captive. The gold and silver taken from Dacia allowed Trajan to finance his forum. It was built between 106 and 113 and is the largest of all imperial forums. Not only did it serve as Trajan's gift to the people, but it also helped to cement him in the public's good graces. In many ways, this was a traditional forum. There is a piazza and a basilica that served as meeting places. A temple to the deified Trajan was built after his death and stood near a triumphal arch that commemorated his Dacian victory. Finally, at one of the ends, there were two libraries. Although they have been lost to the ravages of time, some records indicate that they were built in order to house Trajan's war records. The column stood in between these two buildings. There was also an equestrian statue with sculptures of captured Dacians nearby. Roman citizens could not escape the memories of war, no matter how hard they tried. Today, the column is the largest part of the Forum to survive. It is accessible to tourists and an awesome stop on any trip to Rome. Next, we're going to talk about some elements of the Roman Empire during Trajan's rule. But first, let's take a quick break. Let's dive into just how big the Roman Empire was at its largest. As mentioned before, it was under Trajan's rule that the Roman Empire reached its greatest expanse. It stretched from the British Isles in the north to Egypt in the south, from Portugal in the west all the way to the Persian Gulf in the east. Note that I use the modern day names for these places to make it easier. Besides Dacia, Trajan also annexed, a fancy, slightly nicer word for conquered, the Parthian Empire, Armenia, the Nabataean Kingdom, and Mesopotamia. Although this was an impressive feat, it was a double-edged sword. Yes, it brought more power and prestige to Rome, but maintaining a territory was expensive both in money and manpower. Eventually, Rome was stretched too thin and its size contributed to its downfall in the 5th century. In order to celebrate a military victory, the Senate and the Emperor would declare a triumph. For example, the one put in place for the Dacian War victory lasted for 123 days. 
Not only was this an excuse to party, but it was a way for the emperor or general to show off the treasure and slaves they brought back from war. The triumph was a temporary celebration. For a more permanent one, the column was constructed. It would remind people of Trajan's incredible military might long after he was gone. While listening to this episode, it's important to note that the Romans believed in their own superiority. Anyone who wasn't Roman was a barbarian. This was a term adopted by the Greeks. They came up with it by making fun of the strange speech that other people used. Besides their speech, these tribes were not as unified as the Romans. Their social structures were not set up in a way that would allow them to compete with Rome until the late 5th century. This helped to inflate Rome's ego even more. One example of this attitude is in the depiction of both peoples on the Column of Trajan. The Roman soldiers are shown as clean-shaven and with impeccable equipment. However, the Dacians are shown wearing strange hats and leggings and sporting shaggy beards. These are things the Romans wouldn't be caught dead doing. Historians are not sure if this is a fully accurate depiction of the Dacians or if it was just more propaganda to the Romans. Regardless, it showed a distinct split between the two peoples. The Column of Trajan is an incredibly important Roman monument. Not only does it commemorate an important victory, but it also helps us to understand how the Romans viewed themselves and others. Make sure to tune in next week when I discuss another famous Roman sculpture, the equestrian statue of Marcus Aurelius. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Accessible Art History, the podcast. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at accessible.art.history for updates and keep an eye out for our next episode. They drop every Monday on your favorite podcast platform.